Casper, we're going to start off very quickly going over the Wheatstone Bridge because we need to see how that builds up to the meter bridge. So, so what he's saying there is the, the derivation of this, which I am going to go through, we don't have to know for exam purposes. However, it's a very good revision of electricity. So what we basically set it up like is we have a power, power supply, four resistors, and the idea is we keep chopping and changing the resistors until what? Until they're Okay, I've got a meter. Until what about the meter? What do I attach the meter to? To the current. Where about? Oh, to to D to D. Not ANC. This guy up here, and that guy down there. So I put that there. So now I keep changing the resistors until what? Until it's not. Until it's not reflected. Until this guy here isn't reflected. So basically, current can go up and go down here and out, or it can go down up there and out, or it can go just along the top, or it can go just along the bottom. So what I do is by trial and error, and this is why it's unrealistic, because you can't keep popping in and out resistors. That's why it builds up the meter bridge. But theoretically, if I kept popping resistors in and out until this guy here no longer deflected, it's a galvanometer, it deflects if current is passing in either direction. So if it's not deflecting either way, it means no current is passing from B to D. If no current is passing from B to D, what can I say about the potential difference between these two points? Well, they're very low. Go better than very low. No. Zero. Zero. If there is a potential difference between two points, any two points, if I've got potential difference between A oh, and B. Oh, because the work done and taking the current from one point to another. Very good. So yep. if there's no current, then... So if there's no current, then there's no work being done to bring current from one place to another. That's one way to think about it, which is perfect. Alternatively, if I say... In fact, what was I going to say there? If I put a little galvanometer here, if it's not moving, it means there's no current going from there to there, and therefore, as Jan said, if there's no current going, then there's no work being done to go from there to there, therefore the potential is zero. Another way of looking at it is we twist it around and say, what drives current? Potential difference is what drives current. It pushes the current around, right? So if there's no current, there must be no potential difference. Driving. If there was a potential difference, there would be current. Because now you might, in some cases, if you have a potential difference, you might get a very small current. In what circumstances? If I have a potential difference, so I am pushing, but I'm getting a very small current. There must be a very high resistance. But in this case, I know my galvanometer has a very small resistance. So if there is a potential difference between these two points, and there's no resistance, well then I have to get a current. Or conversely, if there's no current there, then there must be no potential difference between B and D. Okay? So the first thing I write down is the potential difference between B, D, V, B, D equals zero. In fact, I probably should have that in the middle. Oh no, I'll just leave it there. V, B, D equals zero. If there's no potential difference between those two points, what can I conclude about that potential difference and that potential difference? The They're the same. You've got the same common point between there and there. You've got the same beginning point, sorry, and there's no potential difference between the two in points. So if there's no potential difference between the two in points and that point is the same, well then there must be no potential difference between there and there. So therefore you say V, A, B, equals V what? A, D. A, D. Now, I want to ultimately finish up with a formula that relates resistances, R1 over R2 equals R3 over R4. How do I bring in resistances in here? The current and the current. Instead of saying V, V, A, B, what can I say? R1. I1. R1. R1. Yeah, in other words, the, the potential difference across there is equal to I multiplied by R. And it's just the I1 multiplied by the R1. So I1, R1 equals, what do we have down here? I2, R3. I2, R3. Now similarly, we can come over here and say if VBD equals zero, what does that tell me about that potential difference and that potential difference? Equal. They're equal. So VBC equals V, what? VDC. VDC, and now I want to write that in terms of I's and R's. I2, R4. Uh, BBC, be careful. Oh, I1, I R2. I1, R2 equals? I2, R4. I2, 
Why is Karina the only one talking here? So, why... Uh, oh no, hang on. So the current is the same everywhere for the, the top and the bottom line. Why is that? Oh, because... Okay. Is I1 equal to I2? No. no. Very good. And that's the misconception that people have. And that's, I think, or I just give it. In case anyone else is watching and wonders why that not is the case, you often think that if no current is going from there to there, well, then that current must be equal to that current. But it's not the case. And I make the analogy you could have a big river going down in that direction, you could have a very small channel going down in that direction. And if you connect the two of them up, let's say they're a mile apart, and you put a little leaf, and I'm going to represent the leaf with the arrow. I can have a big current going down there, a big current going through here, but let's call this guy point B, and we'll keep the same notation, this guy here, point D. Will current always flow from B to D? Under what, sorry, I'll rephrase the question. Under what conditions will current not flow from B to D? Mm -hmm. Sorry, well, I should, sorry, I should say water. Under what conditions will water not flow from B to D? If D has a higher potential, no, a higher resistance than if the flow of the current is quicker. Because it's Okay, we're restricted. just talking back to water. We're just thinking about water. Big flow of water here, small flow of water here. I'm saying I can get a big river going down here and a small drain going in this direction. They'll all be full of water now. And I'm gonna say, right, no leaf will flow, no leaf the leaf will not move in if that the channel river is for one specific than condition. The, than the D. If which? So B is lower than the D. When will they when will water not move from one to the other? If it's equal. If they're at equal what? Level height. Equal heights. So water will not flow from B to D if B is at the same height as D. Water will flow from a higher potential, a higher gravitational potential field to a lower gravitational potential field. Give the big fancy term. Basically water will flow from a high place to a low place. So if that isn't moving, it's telling me water isn't flowing in there. And if it's not flowing in there, well, then the height at B must be the same as the height at G. And that's the analogy I'm using when I come back here. If my galvanometer isn't moving, it's telling me there's no current going up or down. And current will only move if there is a potential. So if there's no current, it must mean that the potential between those two are the same, just like the height between these two are the same. So therefore, if the potential between those two are the same, and that's got the same common point, well then the potential difference between A and B must be equal to the potential difference between A and B. Just like saying, let's come back here and make this analogy. If and the water is flowing in this direction, right, and it's coming down here, and it's got a common height up here, let's say that's 100 meters high, and here it's, I'm making up numbers, that's 75 meters, and that's 75 meters. If I know that the water can go in two different directions, it can go that way, or it can go that way. Right? You're looking down, so it's you're looking down at like it's on flat, like you're on a helicopter. It can go there where it becomes a raging torrent, or there's a small little stream, it comes from down here. But at this position, they're both at the same heights. They come from a common height here. So what can I say about the height difference there and the height difference there? Okay. They must be the same. But how is I one the same from B to C because you've got a different resistance. How is it the or same there as it is there? Yeah. Let's go back to doing. Can I? So we get rid of this for now. We'll take another little aside. Yeah. If you've got a normal circuit, there's my normal circuit. There's one resistor. There's another resistor. That's 100 ohms. That's 10 ohms. Is it the same? Oh, yes, and the current, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's the same idea, yeah, same idea there as what it is there. Okay, so we take that, so that's just trying to explain all of it, and in case anybody is confused, you don't have to remember all of this, it's just trying to reinforce some of the ideas we've come across. Exactly. Potential no, difference, current difference. Just ask as many questions as you like. Oh, okay, no, you just explained it. No, no, I get it now. <laughs> okay.